name is Linda, yes. a student of Ghana Christian International High School. And we urge you all to subscribe to this Gov TV. Thank you. Hello. You are welcome to His Gov TV. Um, before we begin with today's um, lessons, um, subscribe to our channel and help us to grow um, our subscribers or our fan base. So today's lesson, we are going to look at the uh, return to constitutional rule. That will be our first um, subtopic. Then we also look at the outcome of the 1969 elections. Um, this is going to be our last lesson on the National Liberation uh, Council, the military regime that overthrew the CPP um, government. Earlier in our um, lessons, the last lesson that we had before this one, we discussed the, the failures or the criticisms that were leveled, I mean, uh, that were leveled against the NLC. Uh, people criticized them or the public um, criticized them because of the fact that when they assumed office, they said that they were going to be a caretaker government, which then means that they were not going to stay in power for long. However, uh, because of one or two uh, reasons, they stayed in office for three years, from 1966 to 1969, until when uh, there was a, a corruption uh, scandal involving J.A. Ankara, who was then the chairman of the NLC, and so he was, for I mean, he was forced to resign as the chairman, and uh, A.A. Afrifa took charge of the NLC. And surprisingly, a month after Afrifa took uh, power from uh, Ankara, just in a month, Afrifa allowed election to take place. And so that is what we are going to look at today. So we will look at the return to constitutional rule, what were the processes involved in returning the country to the Second Republic. And then we will look at the outcome of that election. So the election that took place, or the Second Republic election, what was the outcome? What was the, the outcome? Who won? Good. So let's go in there and look at our lesson objectives for today. So our first lesson objectives for today would be for us to be able to discuss the measures. For us to be able to discuss the measures um, taken by the NLC okay, to return Ghana to constitutional um, rule. So what were the various measures uh, taken by the NLC when you were asked to outline the, the measures or to discuss the measures that uh, was taken by the NLC to return Ghana to constitutional rule? You should be able to do that. Then the last one um, will be that by the end of this lesson, you should be able to list uh, the various political parties that contested the 1969 election. So the Second Republic election um, lists some of the, of the political parties that uh, contested in that election. And so uh, basically, um, these uh, are the two main uh, objectives that you should have in mind as we move on in our discussion for today. Good. So get ready and let's look at our first uh, point. So we are beginning with the measures taken by the National Liberation Council, the NLC, to return Ghana to constitutional rule. So we have already established that the NLC said that they were caretaker of government. And so the I mean, measures were, were put in place to return the country into constitutional rule within the shortest possible time. So to this end, when the NLC um, took over uh, in, on 24 um, February 1966, in November, what they did was that they set up uh, a 16-member constitutional commission 
existing member constitutional commission was set up by the by the NLC, and so barely just uh, February, October, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, barely six or seven, eight months when they assumed office, uh, a 16 member of a constitutional commission was set up under the chairmanship of Justice uh, Kufu Ado. The, he, he, is, he was then the chief justice and the father of our present um, uh, president, Nana Adankwa Ekufu Ado. So the the commission was to uh, draft a constitution. So the mandate or the role of the commission was to draft a constitution that will usher the country into the second uh, republic. Okay, and so what the, the the commission did was that it went around the country um, to receive a memoranda. Uh, he had also uh, proposals, and again they also prepared a comprehensive. Uh, draft of a constitution. So they went around the country um, trying to seek people's uh, views on what should be in the constitution. And so that is what the, the, the 60 member for constitution did. So that was the first measure because you can't have a country without a constitution. So if you want to return to a republic, you need a constitution. So the first measure taken by the NLC was the appointment of the 16-member um, commission or constitutional commission. Let's take a look at the next uh, measure. So the next uh, measure was that there was the establishment of a commission on electoral and local government reform. So another commission was also established. So apart from the 16-member uh, co uh, member constitutional commission, there was another commission also established, okay? And this for commission was known as the elect, of course, of course, the Commission on Electoral and Local Government Reform. So uh, the chairman of this commission as well was J.B. Serebo. Now, this commission recommended electoral procedures for the establishment of an independent electoral commission, the EC. So this commission under J.B. Serebo recommended that an independent electoral commission uh, should be established, which will be responsible for the conduct of election. So independent here means that uh, the government or the NLC should not be involved in the establishment of any uh, EC or any electoral commission. There should be an independent body separated from the government so that the government could not have any influence on such a body. And so the electoral of the commission on the electoral and local government reforms established that and that was also done by the NLC so based on the on the recommendation of of the commission on electoral and local um, government reforms an electoral commission was also established with uh, the man with the longest name as an interim electoral commissioner so he's known as VCRAC Crib. And the full meaning is Vincent Cyril Richard Atta um, Crib. All right. Yes, so Vincent Cyril, uh, Vincent Cyril Richard Atta Crib. So he was an interim um, electoral commissioner. And that is the image you find over here. Uh, he died somewhere in um, 2018, in September. He was born um, in 1923 in Accra and died in Accra. Okay, yes. So that is the man you find here. He was the first chief justice of the Second Republic. And so the voters, of course, registration of voters also started as soon as uh, the commission was established. Good. So let's look at the next one. Then again, the political party's decree of 1869 was also announced. And with this, um, uh, the lifting of the ban on the formation of political parties from May uh, 1st, 1969. So, you know, when the NLC took office or took power, they banned all political parties. They banned, they banned the formation of political parties. And so... Where if you want to return back to constitutional rule, then 
you need to lift that ban. And so that ban or that decree was uh, lifted. And so now political parties were free to be formed um, in the country to contest the election. So that was the next uh, measure, the lifting of the political party, uh, or I mean, the lifting of the ban on political parties. Okay. Then August 29, 1969 was also fixed as the date for the general election. So the general election was to take place on August um, 29, 1969. And then September um, 30th, 1969 was to be at the date in which power will be handed um, over to the elected, um, elected um, government. So with the lifting of the ban and the formation of political parties, many political parties were formed in the country to contest the 1969 election. Um, under, this, the, under the description, so look under the description, I have included a link which uh, gives you a video documentary on the electoral uh, processes, what went on um, during the course of the election um, in 1969. And I am hopeful that you will learn more from the video. Good. So let's look at the, the 1969 general election. So let's look at the outcome of the 1969 election, the second, the election that was going to usher the country into the second uh, republic. So uh, in the end, five political parties um, survived and five political parties contested the 1969 election. So let's look at them. The first political party was the Progress Party, which is the PP, which was led by K. A. Bougia, and he's the man you find uh, down here. Good. The next political party was the National Alliance of Liberals, now also led by K. A. Bedema, and Bedema is the one over here. And uh, if you can recall, Bedema was the one who uh, he was he is he was a CPP a member, and he was the one who campaigned for Nkrumah to gain the 1951 election, uh, to, uh, to win the 1961 election, and he was the finance minister too as well, so a CPP representative over there. And then we also had the All People's Republican Party, which was also led by uh, PKK Kwedu. Uh, PKK Kwedu, the image is not here, was also a minister in Nkrumah's government, I think a minister of education and labor as well. And Yes, so the CPP again, a member of the CPP again is represented over here. Then we also had the People's Action Party, which is the PAP, led by Imoru Ayana. And so the image also is not here. Uh, and then the United um, Nationalist Party, the UNP, also led by Dr. H. S. Bannerman. And this man was actually a medical doctor who took part in the 1969 election. So these were the five parties that contested the 1969 election. Now, there were 140 seats to be contested uh, for the election among these five political parties. But before we move on to the next one, examine these five political parties. You realize that the CPP, the Convention's People's Party, is not anywhere to, uh, to be found in, in the election. All right? So... What happened? What has happened that uh, a political party that had won four, uh, three consecutive elections in the country is not part of the fourth election to take place in the country? It's quite very strange. The reason simply was that K. A. Bougia had banned, or when the CPP was banned in 1966, K. A. Bougia and Co. never allowed the CPP to be formed again. To contest this election so they banned the cpp from even contesting in this election and i don't see why i don't know why they did that because that is undemocratic if you accuse Kwame Nkrumah's government of being an autocratic because they were not allowing election to take place because of the one-party system and now you have overthrown the man or the cpp government because of that and now you have you you claim you are now practicing democracy so then why do you stop the CPP from contesting in the 1969 election? 
you know, so it's quite strange. So you realize that the same people who preach uh, democracy <laughs> are the ones who are, uh, I mean, turning their back, doing certain things that if it was done to them, they would not, of course, like it. And so that accounts for the reason why the CPP, you know, uh, I mean, has lost its uh, relevance in the course of Ghana's uh, political um, history, mainly because of some of these things. So you see that over here, they are, because the CPP was not allowed to be formed, back again, you realize that two of their members, uh, of course, you know, uh, contested on their own basis. I am sure Bedema would have formed the CPP again. But I'm also wondering why these two people did not also come together as a force instead of, because they were all coming from the same background. They were all ministers before. So I'm wondering why they didn't come together. But that is just a discussion for the next day. So let's look at the, the outcome of the election. Let's look at the outcome of the election. So 140 seats to be won over here. Uh, where is my Keza? Um, so 140 seats to be won. 140 seats to be won over here. Of course, what do you call? I mean, of course, the 140 seats to be won. So let's see. So the Progress Party, uh, of course, led by the so Progress Party, uh, led by K. Bujia, won massively with 105 seats. That's a landslide victory. 105 seats. Bedema had 29 seats. Bedema had 29 seats. Banaman had two seats. Imoro, okay. Imoriana had two seats. Uh, PP, PKK Kwedu had one seat. And as well as an independent candidate who also had one seat. So when you look at the, the results of the 1969 election, the PP won massively with a landslide victory. It's, and it is not surprising because don't forget that uh, when you take away the CPP, the next political party was that of, or the next known faces was that of the, the remnant of the UGCC people. And so it wasn't that surprising. But I'm also thinking that the, the PP or Bujia and Co banned the CPP because they feared that they may lose the election because the CPP was the only party that could pose, a, a, I mean, a threat to them. Apart from the CPP, the other parties, I mean, there were not even any party. All these parties that contested, this this was their first time of, of course, contesting an election. However, the PP was not like that. The PP, P, the PP had only changed their name from the UGCC to the PP. And so they banning the CPP was for their own good because they will definitely um, win the, the election. And they won. They won. Good, good, good. So today we've learned something. In our next video, we'll look at the reasons that accounted for the landslide victory of the, of the, uh, the PP, um, uh, I mean, of the PP government. We'll look at the reasons for the landslide victory that K. Bujia won. Something really happened. That is why he won that massively. So in our next video, or in our next lesson, we will look at that. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, have a nice day. Uh, subscribe to the channel, share, recommend to your people. Bye-bye.